What is up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here back with another tutorial video for you. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the OBSBOT tail air control software for PC. Well, not for PC, for Mac, but we're gonna be looking at the desktop version of the software. Um, I'm also gonna be testing out the iOS version of the software over the next coming weeks as well. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and you see all of that stuff. Um, now, Obspot did kindly send over the Tail Air for me to have a little look at towards the end of last year, but they didn't have any apps for me, really ready for me to do my testing with. In that initial video, I was just using an old Android phone, which I managed to borrow from work because they were a little bit later coming out with the iOS and the Mac OS X apps, but they did release those towards the end of last year. Um, there's still a couple of issues with those apps, though. I would still say there may be a little bit in beta. I don't know what's happened there, but it's just changed focus to my hand. So let me just move that back down to my preset and disable tracking. Don't know what's gone on there. Um, it obviously didn't like me holding my hand up in a certain way there that I triggered off the AI tracking. Um, where was I? So yeah, there were a couple of bugs still a little, well, more like annoyances with the app. So you couldn't actually do a firmware update on the iOS app for a while, but you can now, and you don't think you can do automatic firmware updates on the Apple app um, for Mac OS X at this point in time. But I do believe that you can do them manually by just downloading the firmware um, and pushing it over that way. So it's getting better. I've been using the app for the past few days now. I've not really had any crashes or anything. Obviously, there was the weird thing where I held my hand up for too long there that tricked out the AI. But other than that, yeah, it's been, been pretty good. Um, to download the app, you just go over to the old spot tail air, go over to download, and then you've got all of the different software. So the start is for the mobile, and then they've got OBSPOT um, Center, which was called OBSPOT Webcam beforehand. And as you can see here, you can also download firmware updates as well. And that is a user manual on there. So that's everything that you're gonna need. Now, as for connecting the tail air to your computer, you do have a few options. You can actually connect to it over Wi-Fi. So it will scan for it on Bluetooth. It will then connect to the tail air on Wi-Fi. This would allow you to do recording as well. But I do find that the latency isn't as good as what I'm running right now, which is the UVC mode. So running it as a USB webcam. Um, one thing to note though, is that the Obspot tail air doesn't ship with the UVC mode enabled. So you might find the first time you connect it up to your computer, if you haven't connected it up or used it on a smartphone app um, and enabled that UVC mode, you will be connecting to it wirelessly. But if you wanna change all those modes, I'll just show you here. You come over to the more setting and I believe it was on the more setting. Where is it? Yeah, here we go. So you just untick that UVC mode. So let's just untick that for a second should bring the feedback up. So I imagine the audio has probably gone out of sync now and this is it over Wi-Fi. Okay, so let's just go back to UVC mode. Um, it's gonna switch me back over. You can see that's a lot better there and then we can change the frame rate as well there. Um, one thing to note as well, um, it does perform a little bit better on that. If you've got a nicer Wi-Fi network, um, I've only just moved and I'm just using the stock router that I was given. So I haven't set up a nice network yet. So your mileage is gonna vary. It does seem to work a lot better with the app. Um, and if you were closer to your router, you're gonna get a better connection there. But um, if you're just testing this out and you wanna see how it performs, the UVC mode is much better latency. Anyway, so enough of that beginning video waffle out of the way. Let's have a little look at, at the app then. So first things first, we've got the camera, video preview, press that, disappeared. Press that and I'm back. You can change the frame rate, okay? Can't record from this. It'd be nice if you could just record on the computer. Um, but you can't, in UVC mode, you can't actually record um, to the actual OBSPOT tail air either. So if we then switch that off, that UVC mode like you just saw, um, and then I hit record, it would record directly to the tail air. Now in the settings here, there is an option for recording and where you can save it, but I haven't been able to figure that one out. So I think that's something that maybe needs a little bit more work. And there is also hotkeys as well. So I can just press some buttons there, move myself around. I like that one. So that is just three different predefined views. Um, and there's some stuff that you can do there. You can also set presets as well. We're gonna do the tracking in a second. So that's generally the preset that I've been using for this video. Then I can also take it a little bit wider if you want as well. Um, and then you can actually do more of a control here, but I find it is very sensitive, which is why I prefer to just knock it 
with the uh, with the arrow keys on my keyboard um, and you can just reset that there as well so that's kind of where it is at the moment where I'm not quite sat center and then we'll go back to the preset next up we have tracking then so tracking speed you can see we got set, set to standard I can hold my hand up now there we go that should be tracking me now um, this isn't the biggest room to test for tracking um, and I haven't got a lot of light in here at the moment so again take this with a pinch of salt but it does track you quite well see as I get nice and close let's do close-up tracking now it's getting a little bit so here's I'm towards the back of the room there and it's tracking me bit better I haven't got auto exposure on at the moment which is why it's probably looking a bit darker and then that is like an upper body track as well which is kind of a little bit close to the first one and I think standard for speed works just well I think the standard does more than enough so I'm just going to turn that tracking off just hold my hand up tracking is off and set myself back to the normal preset just get myself comfy couple of icons up at the top here so you can actually turn it off there is the remote controller this is the hotkey ones there's a virtual camera but I haven't been able to get the virtual camera to work there hasn't been a virtual camera showing in my device and there is this one as well which is on-screen control which is a separate app which I believe you can customize um, like an open source app so that's something I might look into in the future but I find there's enough controls on this hit for now moving across then so we've got some extra options here so here is all of the options for customizing the image okay now i haven't got auto exposure turned on at the moment because my room is quite dark give it a second anyway i've just got two small lights in front of me here and i find it's just a little bit too you can see as i move around there it's a bit too sensitive but we'll just do should we do the close-up track again with the auto exposure see how it handles me that's lit me up a bit better, but yeah, it's a bit dark. Let's turn that off. Go back to this one. Here we go. Anywho, so I've just found it a little bit too much, but here you can also adjust things like your anti-flicker. So if I change that to 60 hertz now, you'll see the lamp behind me starts flickering um, because I am in a 50 hertz region. So... That is why when you are doing manual exposure, you need to make sure that you are setting the correct shutter speed. So for me, it is one over 50. Um, that way the lights don't flicker. If I come up to one over 60 and you can see there we got some flicker on the lights. As well as that, we've also got the autofocus settings as well. So we can turn that off and we can do like a manual focus. I'm not getting that quite dialed in though. So we'll go back to auto. Um, and you can say autofocus mode on face. I don't know if that's going to prioritize the face there. Still keeping my face in focus. Let's go back to global. Hmm. Well, I don't really appear that that one doesn't do too much. Um, I can still hear the autofocus motor as well in the camera. Um, so I wouldn't be using the built-in microphones in this. That's why I'm using an external microphone here today. There's also the white balance settings. Um, but I found that this does actually do the white balance quite well. It does quite natural on the skin tones. If I set it to custom, for example, so what are my lights at? 4,500 Kelvins at the moment. And you can see that doesn't quite doesn't quite get me there so I don't really like these additional options um, I haven't tested out the daylights and stuff outside I wouldn't say I'm quite tungsten but I find that the auto white balance is it gonna oh god yeah it's caught me back up now the auto white balance works quite well you can also adjust the image as well so there is some different presets and you can also do a custom so you can tweak things a little bit more to your liking i'll probably say a bit less contrast a little bit bit less sharpness maybe um there's nothing for noise reduction though which is again something that i would like to see added so, oh and there was also a hdr mode which i didn't see up here as well hdr is a bit funky you can see it kind of exposes 
how he exposes this little uh, my cloud light in the background. Let's turn it on. Let's turn it off. I think we'll leave HDR off. I would probably call that a bit of a fake HDR. And then there's some extra settings in here as well. You can do like all beauty mode things. So that is different filters. So we can do a black and white filter, nature filter, fresh. Um, you're not going to see this too much because of the amount of space that we've got. I wonder if we zoom right out. Let's turn some of this off. Let's go none for that one. And I wonder now, let's reset this. Wonder I can so I can smooth my skin, I can clarify what that's doing, slim my face. Oh, this is just basic. Oh, well, there's loads of stuff. I can do stuff to my body, bring my waist in. I don't think I'm gonna. That's just all. It just seems to be slimming in the same area there. I think it's just aiming for certain areas in the scene but because i'm sat down it's not gonna it's not gonna do that well so we'll just let's get rid of all of that stuff there we go back to normal am i back to normal my face looks back to normal and then there is background blur as well i found if you're on the newer version of mac though and on a apple silicon mac their background removal does work better, their built-in one. So if you're going to be using this with Zoom or Teams or something like that, I would say use the one that now appears up here on Mac OS X. Um, it does work a bit better. Um, I'd say this is probably in line with Zoom and Teams when it comes to how it handles Zibler. And then finally, we've got just some extra settings. So you can do like auto power on and off. Um, we've got that UVC mode, which I showed you earlier. Oh, I've still got the blur on. Let's get rid of that. Um, and then there is a little bit more as well if you want your gestures turned on. So maybe turn those off if you like to put your hands in the screen a little bit. But this is the one that I quite like. Is it a dynamic zoom? Wee! Ooh! Wee! Ooh! No, it doesn't like me. Under that one. So let's just zoom in and out. Gestures don't like me. Don't don't put this on OBSPOT. Okay, you can update your presets as well if you want to add more. You can do all that sort of stuff. Um, there's some options for the built-in mic as well, so you can have the volume on it, um, automatic gain control, which is quite good as well, and that is the noise reduction, which I did test in the original video, which I will link to in this video. We're not going to do it today. Week isn't actually that bad. I generally prefer to do all this afterwards, but if I wanted to just take the edge off a little bit, if I was outdoors with this doing something live and there was a lot of noise, I would probably go with the weak. Medium and strong becomes a little bit too much. Um, the automatic gain control works quite well as well. Then you can change the image, the mirror image. Brightness, I believe this one is for the light, which you can't see. So this is the light that's actually on the device. Oh, and this is the one that I really do like actually as well. You can change the video segmentation size because a lot of these devices, you know, they have this four gig limit for video and it splits it and it's a nightmare. 64 gig gives you quite a bit of recording time in between segments. Um, so I'd recommend that you can do that. You set that. Then you also have just a reset, factory date, a reset and your firmware. And you can do a manual firmware upgrade as well. So yeah, it's quite a cool app. Um, allows you to really control stuff. I think the mobile apps are a little bit more polished. You can do a little bit more with it in regards to tracking and stuff. So I will be showing all of that over the next coming week. So please do make sure you subscribe so you can see all of my content on the Obspot Tail Air. I've been really impressed with this little camera so far. Let me know if you're thinking about getting one in the description or if you've already got one, let me know what you're using it for and how you're using this awesome little live streaming camera.